Father, we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to once again read into your word, Father, the absolute truth. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be able to open your word up. And those who listen, see and witness your word, Father, for they to get the message, for they to understand, articulate, comprehend what you are wanting them to know. Father, I thank you, Father, for the opportunity to be able to be used by you to bring forth what it is you want them to know. Father, I his father thank you thank you for giving us the word to what we can read and we can comprehend and we can articulate through the holy spirit for the holy spirit be welcome and to just run rapid through this word for the for the for the translation and interpretation to be led by the holy spirit we thank you for that father we ask you father for your word to be comprehensible and for it to be you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. We thank you. And we praise you, Father. Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Good day, everybody. Good day, good day. Hope everyone's having a wonderful day. In Jesus. Fantastic times in Jesus. Whether we catch you in the morning when you're waking up, stretching, getting ready to go, having a cup of coffee, maybe some breakfast, just getting started in your day. Stretching out. Get ready for a day full of work, errands, or activities. Or we catch you halfway through your day when you are going through some stuff, seeing victories, praying through situations and challenges. But still getting through that thing they call that midday madness. Or you're ending your day. Spending time with the family, friends, those close to you, having dinner, having a bite to eat, watching some TV, relaxing, and just withdrawing from a long day. However, whenever, whatever day, part of the day we're catching you right now, it really doesn't matter because now you're tuned in to the Blue Book. Presented to you by C Rep Ministries. C restoration in progress hosted by your boy blue Pentecost because he paid it hope everyone's having a wonderful day regardless of what part of the day it is a lot of things have happened I'm sure from the moment you woke up to right at this moment right now uh, you have gone through already your fair share of challenges um, we do Every single day, we deal with challenges. We deal with stuff being put in our brains. 
we deal with stuff around us, we deal with our flesh, we deal with all types of different warfare throughout the day, hoping that we can get through the victory at the victory battle at the battle. The thing is, is you battle, battle, battle for victory at the end of the day, so when you go to bed at night time, you know you've gotten a victory for the most part. You may not win every battle, but at least at the end, you'll have victory because you have Jesus. Okay. And you have the Holy Spirit cuff really truly really guides you through the day and gives you discernment. And they say common sense is common number. No why? Because people are taking the Holy Spirit and taking consciousness, the direction of the Holy Spirit, out of common and out of sense. So rather than you having common sense, now you just have general sense. Because general sense is the things that you should or should not do regardless. And the Holy Spirit, Ed, that gives you a common sense right and wrong good and bad and so forth it's a comforter and director of your life and we have systematically taken that out for whatever reasons we feel we need to do that and we have let let the the the, the brainless take over society and that's just I mean, everyone in this nation if not the world can relate to brainless activity uh, there are some people who use other words and terminology for that, but we'll just leave it at brainless. Okay. Before we get going on our day, our message, our lesson, whatever the case is, we're going to do what we always do about this time and do our pledge. So, I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and the Savior from whom kingdom it stands. One Savior. Crucified. Risen. And coming again of life, liberty to all those who believe. Fantastic. Fantastic. I think today on this message there is two variables playing in this message today. Two things that are very, 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 very important in life. We don't get them. We don't pay attention to them. But they're definitely very important. One is faithful. Okay? Faithful. Staying true to what you say. Staying true to what you do. Faithful is very, very complicated today. Because people just want to do them. They don't want to stick to anything. Commit to anything. Or own anything for accountability. Which is one of the three principles of the Blue Book and Secret Ministries. Is love, peace, and accountability. Faithful is tied up in all that. Okay, it's a part of that, although it's not one of the key three elements, it's still a part of that because faithfulness is a very important key to God. If you can't be faithful to Him, because faithful is also wrapped up in love, faithful love. It's a very important kind of combination. Love being God, life of victory eternally, and faithfulness, which is a very important key element to that love. He wants you to have faithful love. You, you're going to fall. You're a human being. We are not Jesus. You're going to fall. You're going to stumble. It is part of life. No matter how much Jesus you have in you, no matter how high on that theological radar you become for studying and, and praying and all the other things that you may do to get there, even the highest of high fall. Because the higher you get, the closer you think you can box with God, you can give God all kinds of nonsense. And the part that the baseline is, is that you're a human being, regardless of how high you get, you can get to the top of the mountain, get to the highest mountain, you're still going to fall because you are not God. We are a part of God, we are to love God, but we are not God. So He wants you to be faithful, He wants you to be faithful in your love. Okay, that means. That means listening and following his his words, the word of God, obviously, what he left behind for us. Listening to our Holy Spirit that's in ourselves, which is our conscience. People call it conscience or Holy Spirit, whatever the case is, our comforter, leader, guide, and director. And to just do things without expectation. Okay? Faithful love doesn't require a return back. Faithful love is you just doing your part according to what God wants you to do. That's all that is. That is not 
well, you know, I'm not going to do it if there's no come up on it or there's no return on it. Do you realize that you having that in your mind, the return, the acknowledgement, the appreciation, all of that is a self gratifying deal. If someone thanks you for something or gives you acknowledgement for what you do, that's just a bonus. You, Cause if you do things for God and you're faithful to his love and you listen and do what you're supposed to do according to what God has told you to do, and you're listening to your, your, to your Holy Spirit, the gratitude from somebody giving you back something or acknowledging is a bonus. Because God's going to take care of you if you do what he wants you to do. That's a simple to take the mechanics of it. You do what God wants you to do. You listen to what God is telling you to do. You give from a cheerful heart and you leave it at that. Whatever comes back at you, whether it's them acknowledging you, you get blessed with some type of financial blessing, blessed with some type of material blessing, you get uh, some type of advantage or some type of, some type of bring up from where you were, and you didn't expect it. That's what God is primarily focused on is your less expectation and more determination. You see what I'm saying? If you can get the expectation out and get more into reflection, then you may be surprised at exactly what God's going to do for you. But that unfortunately, we as human beings have this entitlement complex that we have to be told, thank you. Now, yes, it is nice to be told thank you. It is nice to be acknowledged for the good things that you do. In my experience, it seems like when people get told, oh, you're doing a great job or, oh, you know, I appreciate what you did. Now, some people can't handle that type of verbal positivity. They will screw up because they now know you acknowledge him and they think that that's the, that, that's the top. That's that you acknowledged him. That's it. Now they're going to just, just bail. Not ever doesn't happen all the time, but in my experience, I've seen it happen more times than not. I don't truly like too much acknowledgement because I do, I do for I do what I do for God, whether it's my work, whether it's my family, whatever. Now I I appreciate the, the gratitude, the thank yous, and everything. That's wonderful. I appreciate that, and I will never in my life ever say that don't do it because that's just a bonus. But what I'm saying is, is that when you do something for God, God's looking for your heart, not for your return. Because God will take care of you. That's a faithfulness. That's God telling you, hey, guess what? That person needs this. That person needs that. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's do this. Let's do that. And you're just doing exactly what God tells you to do. If someone comes back at you, fantastic. You're blessed. You, they, they acknowledge what you've done. You're, you, you, you've got a bonus on that one. If they don't, leave it in God's hands. Hey, I did what I could do. I love you for what? I love you. I care about you. I did what I could do. I keep it moving. God got more things for me to do. If they come back at you, boom, bonus. Thank you. I appreciate it. No problem at all. Don't mention it. You know, there's people who out there who don't even want to be told thank you. That just do it because they love to do it. They care to do it. They don't want to hear a thank you because God got them regardless. This is a faithfulness that God has with his people. He's looking for over recognition. Okay, we're to recognize God in any position because God wants us to recognize him as the Lord, as God. <clears throat> but we as believers and as people who are in the gospel need to keep pushing regardless of the acknowledgement that's the faithfulness of god is god will always take care of you are you are you confident and have enough faith in you to know that no matter what you do for god god's going to take care of you no matter, no matter what work you put ahead your faith is going to tell you that no matter what i do what i give what i help what i do god is going to take care of me does that is, is that a part of your faithfulness you got to check that and then you do it for love. Some people say, I just can't love everybody. Well, that's something you have to deal with. Love is only God. Okay? Love is only God. So if you're a believer in the Lord and you've got God, you know love. Because that's the love that you have for God. God love. Do you have the knowledge of it? 
do you know what type of love you're working with? Okay? Do you know it? Do you have the knowledge of God? Do you understand what God's wanting you to do? Something you gotta sit back and think about. You know what I'm saying? Are you tuned in enough, feeling him enough, to know what he wants you to do? Do you? That's the question you gotta ask yourself. Not everyone can answer that question. Especially nowadays, when everyone's so caught up on the me factor. Me too, me too, me too. Never thinking about themselves as an individual, but because somebody else has done it, I can do it too. Well, we know that, but it's not about whether or not you can do it. It's about whether or not it's good for you to do. Very simple stuff. Okay? So, we're going to be in our words. So, if you got your Bible, pull it out. Whether it's the good book like I have right here, right in front of me. Or it is a, a, te a, a technology, computer, laptop, iTop, whatever the case may be. Okay, we're going to be turning into Hosanna. Hosea. H O S E A. Hosea. I call it Hosea. 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 H O S E A. Hosea. Hosea. <laughs> 6 6. Old Testament. Um, we're out to Jeremiah, right before Matthew. It's in between there. H O S E A. Hosea. Josie. Josa. <laughs> 6 6. Okay? So. This says, fantastic, it says, For I desire and delight in the dutiful, steadfast love, duty, the work of it, steadfast, which is steady in truth, love and goodness, not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God, and the knowledge and the acquaintance of with God more than burnt offerings. So what does that mean? What does that mean? For I desire in the light in the dutiful steadfast love and goodness in goodness not sacrifice. Do you know what the difference between faithful love and a sacrifice is? I desire and delight in dutiful, steadfast love. The duty of and the solid commitment of love over a sacrifice. You know why it's different? What is a sacrifice? Sacrifices is you taking a loss or what is perceived to be a loss over a gain or for somebody else's gain or something else's advantage theoretically okay so if i take if i if i am a part of a sacrifice i am preparing getting ready to take a loss or a negative or an l if you call it for the better or for the advantage of somebody else. Okay. Now a sacrifice for God is different. A little different because you take a loss for him. But you have to understand a sacrifice doesn't mean you love something. That means you're just willing to take a hit. Okay. You're willing to take a hit for, some, for, for something. Does it mean it's godly? doesn't always mean that. But if you're willing to take a sacrifice for something, that doesn't require love or faithfulness. That just requires you to be able to take a hit. Could be a selfish thing. I am prepared, I want to do this, so I'm gonna take a sac I'm gonna sacrifice myself in order for it to happen. I'm gonna sacrifice this for that. It doesn't require any love. It requires you to make a decision. The ultimate sacrifice. 
ultimate sacrifice. There are things you must understand that a sacrifice isn't the ultimate. Faithful love is. Okay? So, for I desire and delight in the dutiful, steadfast love and goodness, not sacrifice, and I knowledge of and acquaintance with God. Knowledge and knowledge of and acquaintance means you want to knowledge him and you want to know him. You want to be friends with him. You want to not okay, not so much friends, but you want to be just in the conversation with God more than burnt offerings. Rather than you give something up, I just want to be in the presence. Sacrifice, burnt offerings. Love, faithful love, and knowledge. You tell me. Okay, so let's go over to Matthew 9, 13 as part of this. Let's see what it says over here. Maybe there's a different way of putting it. Matthew 16, 9, and 9, 13. All right, let's see if there's a different way of putting this. 9, 13. Okay, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, that is readiness to help those in trouble and not sacrifice and sacrificial victims. For I come not to call and invite to repentance the righteous, those who are upright and right and standing with God, but sinners and erring ones, all those not free from sin. Hmm. Read it again. Go and learn this, what this means. I desire mercy, which is, that is, readiness to help those in trouble. Okay, that's mercy. Help those in trouble. And not sacrifice and sacrificial vi victims. Okay, so you want you're telling me you want mercy and you want you want to help those in trouble, not sacrifice them. You want to help them. Okay. For I come not to call and invite to repentance the, the righteous, those who are upright and in right standing with God, but in sinners, the erring ones, and those not free from sin. Okay. What does that mean? I desire mercy and help those that are help that they're hurt rather than sacrifice them. I want to help people rather than say, okay, well we'll sacrifice them. I you know, whatever. It's it's sacrifice the sacrificials. Now nah, they're victims. You don't want to do that. You want to help and have mercy and knowledge. And at that time, when this was written, there wasn't a Jesus like that. Okay, you got to understand something. What they're talking about in Hosanna, or Jose, is when you're with God, you have Him. You have the repentance. We're talking about those who are hurting. They're victims. Excuse me. I'm not inviting the invited because you're already invited. I'm inviting the sinners, the ones who haven't yet got me. You see, I come to love and mercy, not to make the victims more victims, and to not and I'm not here to invite the ones who have already got it. I invite the ones who don't got it. Get my point? Very interesting. 12-7. Okay. 12-7. And if you had only known what this means, says means, I desire mercy. To spare and to forgive rather than sacrifice the sacrificial victims. You would not have commanded the guiltless. Hmm. You would not 
Oh, you would have not com 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 uh, condemned the guiltless. Very interesting. And if you've known this, what I'm what this saying means, I desire mercy, readiness to help, to spare and to forgive, rather than sacrifice the sacrificial victims. I'd rather give you mercy than, 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 than just sacrifice you completely. You would not have condemned the guiltless. Of course you don't condemn, you're not going to condemn the guiltless. They're not guilty. They're forgiven. Very simple truths. Okay? Both of them fall in the same vein. Let's see here. So, when we're looking through other versions of this, what do we got? NIV says, For I desire I desire mercy, not sacrifice, and acknowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. ESV says, For I desire steadfast love, and not sacrifice, and knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. KJV says, For I desire mercy, and not sacrifice, knowledge of more than burnt offerings. NASB, National Saint, okay? for NASB says, For I desire delight in loyalty rather than sacrifice. Okay, loyalty. Same, it's about the same thing. And in the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. The NLT says, I want you to show love, not other sacrifices. I want you to know me more than, than I want burnt offerings. I want to show love and I want to know more. Pretty simple. Okay. At CSB says, for I desire faithful love without sacrifice, knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Pretty simple stuff if you actually ask me. Okay. Let's see what else we have here. Okay, America Standard Version says, I for I desire goodness and I sacrifice the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Okay. Pretty good stuff. Mercy, faithful love, loyalty. Uh, the New Darby, the Darby translation says, For I delight in loving kindness and I sacrifice the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. That's not too bad. I want your constant love not your animal sacrifices. I would rather have my people know me than by burnt offering. Basically, I would rather have you know me than by what, what I sacrifice in order to get to God. I want you to know me. It's so Jesus talking, Bill. Because, um, you know, it's much better to know the Lord than it is to always know what you're sacrificing. He sacrifices. Okay, the Lexham English Bible says, Because I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice all you got rather than burnt offerings. Same stuff. The Message Bible, I, I, I am after love that lasts, not more religion. I want you to know God. I want you to know God, not to go for more prayer meetings. Ooh, that's pretty good, actually. I'm, I'm, ra I'm after love that lasts, not more religion. I want you to know God, not to go to more prayer meetings. Hmm. <laughs> That's pretty good. The Message Bible is pretty straightforward on that one. Mm. He took the bird offerings right out of that, out of that scripture. Oh. Hmm. Okay. The RHE says, For I desire mercy and I sacrifice unto God, not more holocausts. Hmm. So they're referring to the Holocaust as burnt offerings. That's pretty impactful. Okay, the White Club version says, "For I would mercy, for I would mercy and not sacrifice. I would, I would the knowledge, I would the knowledge of God more than burnt sacrifices. For I desire love and not sacrifice. Yeah, I desire the knowing of God and more than burnt sacrifices. Same thing three, four times. So the one that really hit is this one here." The Dozeby Reigns Catholic Bible, for I desire mercy and not sacrifice the knowledge of God more than Holocaust. That's pretty tough. To refer to burnt offerings as a Holocaust. I'm not saying it wrong, but it's just pretty tough. And then we got the one about prayer meetings, which is right here somewhere. Yeah, the Message Bible. I'm after love that lasts, not more religion. I want you to know. I want you to know God, not go to more prayer meetings. That's pretty crazy to say it that way. You see what I'm saying though? The desire for love is more important than a sacrifice. Because love stays. 
sacrifice okay done move on to the next too many sacrifices not enough love that's why that was taken out because jesus was the ultimate sacrifice if you understand i'm telling you and i want the knowledge of god not more of this just offering stuff just okay we'll get together blah 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 you gotta know god you gotta love god very very impactful very impactful so at the end of the day what this is is faithful knowledge of god so i'm gonna name this faithful knowledge of god stay i desire faithful love and not just a sacrifice i desire you to know god rather than always offer something don't offer it this stuff is the sacrifice and offering was taking care of with jesus he's he already took care of this he was the sacrificial lamb that had to go for our sins and he was the offering that the god that god was pleased with in order for us to have forgiveness for sins pretty simple stuff fantastic 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 nice word so what you take from this study is this and then who's ya six six this is what you take from it okay be faithful in your love to God you don't always have to sacrifice to have be faithful to God if you have to because that's the only way you're going to be able to get to God no one's telling you not to but God rather for I desire faithful love not a sacrifice he rather you just be faithful and him open doors and you do it than always you feel you have to sacrifice something because sacrifice sacrificing isn't always what he wants you to do he wants you to be faithful to him and faithfulness can also be a sacrifice too sacrificing your time sacrificing a decision sacrificing a meal whatever the case may be be faithful to God and the knowledge of God read your word follow the studies that we do don't always think it has to be an offer have knowledge of God read he will help you through this okay fantastic word today fantastic knowledge faithful in knowledge of God it's a fantastic thing when you're able to have it because it's a gift having God is a gift I don't think really it really boils down to really having God as much as it is knowing you have God everyone is God's it's the time between you're born from your mother to the moment you accept Jesus that makes a decision on whether or not you really accept the Lord or not you don't have to have the worst of all testimonies to be able to have salvation that's another th topic that that people get confused on is you don't have to live this horrible life for God to intervene and save you all you gotta do is realize that somewhere down the line between the moment you're born from your mom to the moment you're standing there contemplating it that you've sinned you have broken some part of God's absolute truth. You have fallen short on some occasion, whether it's abusing yourself, abusing your family, um, causing harm to somebody, knowingly or unknowingly. Whether or not you know it's right or wrong, it's still wrong in God's eyes. And these are the things that we're accounted for. You know, it's just you ignore it, and that's human nature to ignore wrong, even though all know right. Main thing is, beloved, please stay faithful to God's love, faithfulness. You may fall, slip, you're going to go through these things, but stay faithful. Go back. Ask God for forgiveness every night before you go to bed, before you close your eyes. 
wake up, thank God that you are up and going and you have another day to bless somebody in some way. Love, peace, and accountability. Love without expectation of love back. Be in peace. Even when everyone's tribulating around you, be in peace. And try to maintain it. And accountability. Show it. Because it's contagious. Those are the three main factors in Secret Ministries and Blue Book. If you can maintain some level of those three on a daily basis, you are having the victory daily. You don't have one victory and then it can last you a whole month, a whole week, a whole day. One, you battle all day to that victory at night. Victory. Okay? We all live in different lives. We all have different challenges we go through. You know, depending on how you grew up, depending on how you live your life now, what jobs you may have, what activities you do, what errands you run, we all have different lives. Whether you have kids, don't have kids, you take care of your family, we all have challenges. The beautiful thing about it is, God's universal. Jesus sacrificed and died for all of us. And the Holy Spirit is there to comfort you and lead you guys and direct you. So, once you get God in your heart, once you accept the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart, and the Holy Spirit's the next thing. It gives the Spirit, it's a plus, it's a bonus, helps you out. You have a weapon. It's a weapon of mass blessings. You speak in the Holy Spirit, the devil can't hear you. He, he can hear you, but he can't understand. He can't comprehend what you're saying. It makes him very mad because he can't read you. Life, death out of the tongue. You speak some nastiness, some, some vulgarness. You speak harm to somebody. The devil can hear you speaking glossolalia. That's what we're giving it for. So we can speak it and God knows our heart. We speak through our mouth. Our heart speaks and he down here, this, that, this, this, this dude down here who runs this crust of this earth gets irritated because he can't understand you. Okay? Love, peace, and accountability. Pentecost. Because he paid it. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Whether you're beginning it or finishing it. God bless every single one of you. I hope you guys stay with in faithful love. And I hope you guys have the knowledge of God. And keep it. Much love to you guys. Check out bluebook.com. Just set it up. It's a real simple site. 8lu8ok.com Um... We're on several different platforms. We're on social media. Like, share, listen to us on whatever platform you choose, whatever is easiest for you. Blue Book is there. Um, again, much love to you guys. God bless you. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, prayer requests, email us at bluebook at gmail.com. That's 8lu8ok at gmail.com. And we'll get to you. Okay? God bless every single one of you. Fear. Respect God. Follow Jesus. And let the Holy Spirit flow through you like a Russian river. Until next time. Until next time. <laughs> and until next time. Oh, uh -huh.